Happy Easter, everyone. Don't worry, the ears won't stay on for the whole service. Hallelujah. Oh, no, actually. As we begin our service of worship, we acknowledge the land in which we gather on. It's the traditional territory, first to the neutral people, then the Haudenosaunee and the Anishinaabe people, many of whom continue to live and work here today. This territory is covered by the Upper Canada Treaty, the Niagara Purchase Treaty, and is within the land protected by the Dish with the One Spoon Wampum Agreement. Today, this gathering place is home to many First Nations, Métis, and Inuit people. Let us continue to work towards reconciliation with our siblings, and always remember that our great standard of living is directly related to the Indigenous people's resources and care for this land. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed, hallelujah. May his grace and peace be with you. May he fill our hearts with joy. Almighty God, and to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write both these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, goodwill to men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we glorify thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, Lamb of God, the Father of the Father, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sin of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord. Thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading. The first reading is from the book of Isaiah. On this mountain the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth, for the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, so that he might save us. This is the Lord of whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will say Psalm 118, verses 1 and 2, and 14 to 24, responsively by the full verse. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, his mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and he has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die, but live, and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. 
This is the gate of the Lord, who he who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy and mighty God, your Son's triumph over sin and death has opened to us the gate of eternal life. Purify our hearts that we may follow where he has gone and share in the radiance of his glory. We ask this for the sake of our risen Lord. Amen. Thank you. The second reading is from the letter of Paul to the Corinthians. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand, through which also you are being saved, if you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I hand it on to you as of, as of first importance what I, what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, that he was bur buried and that he was raised on the third day according accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cyphus, then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And Contrary, I, work harder than, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Spirit. Glory be to thee, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, Who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance? Hallelujah, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Please be seated. Happy Easter, everyone, again. So who will roll away the stone? It's the Sabbath is now over, and the women are going to anoint Jesus' body. But in front of the tomb is a stone 
that stone is to protect the body so nobody takes it and that nobody can get in. Interesting as they walk that that's their only concern is who will remove the stone. They're not questioning about the guards that are there. They're not questioning the fact that the fact that they are followers of Jesus, they can still potentially be arrested. They're not looking for the other disciples. Really, the men should be there helping them, but they're not. They're only worried about who's going to remove the stone. Easter. When you hear Easter, what goes through your head? What comes to my mind is the great miracle of Jesus' resurrection. The great miracle of Jesus overcoming death. The great miracle that we now have eternal life with God. That when our time on this earth ends, we have a new one to go into with God. I'm fascinated with this stone. On Monday, Thursday, I made comment that Judas, his betrayal at the Last Supper is only mentioned in three out of the four Gospels. But the size of this stone and this stone is actually mentioned in all four Gospels. It makes you wonder what's Why is it so important? Why did all four writers feel they needed to put this little detail in? Well, what is the stone? As I said, it's it's an object to stop people from going in and out of the tomb. It's a hindrance, it's a complication. How are these ladies going to get in with this big stone in the way? For us to have experienced the full risen Christ, for us to experience full eternal life with God, God had to remove the stone. And that's what God did. God removed the stone for the ladies. God removed the hindrance and the complications so that we could have a life with Jesus. So my question, because there's always a question, what are the hindrances that are keeping you from fully experiencing the risen Christ? What complications do you have in your life that are stopping you from having a full relationship? What stones do you have that need to be removed? What are you struggling with? Who are you struggling with? What is keeping you inside your own personal tomb? Simon Peter, his name was Simon. Jesus gave him the name of Peter, which meant rock. And in the Gospel of Matthew, we hear Jesus say, I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Haiti will not overtake it. Peter was supposed to be the rock of the church. However, after Jesus' death, Peter was locked away in the upper room with the other disciples, absolutely terrified of the authorities. Peter and the disciples were so scared that they sealed themselves in the room. They sealed themselves in their own tomb and their fear was their hindrance. Their fear was their complication. Their fear was the stone that was blocking them. And I think sometimes we all do this. We create our own tombs and we cover them. We hide behind these big rocks. But God knew that Jesus needed to be seen. So God moved the rock so Jesus could emerge. And then Jesus 
removed the hindrance for the disciples. He showed up in the upper room. He showed them his wounds. He broke bread with them on the road to Emmaus. He removed all their fears, gave them all the strength and courage that they needed. He brought the Holy Spirit to them so they could all speak in different languages and share the good news. Jesus removed the stones for the disciples. And if we allow it, God can do that for us. Remove the hindrances, the complications. God can set us free of our fear, of our guilt, of our shame, of our sadness, of our grief. The Blessed Holy Trinity can give us strength to carry on and give us courage. I love the women of the story today because they were so courageous. Their only concern was about moving the stone. They weren't scared about going to Jesus' tomb. They weren't scared about being seen in public. The men were scared. The women had courage. And despite not knowing how the heck they were gonna get in the tomb, they went anyway. They had no idea how they were gonna do it, but they went anyway. So what does this tell us? The ladies went where they needed to go without worrying. Deep down inside them, they trusted that somehow they would be able to get into the tomb. And I think that's the key, is the trust. We have to trust. We have to trust that God will help us remove the hindrances, the stones of our lives. We need not to worry or stress so much, but trust that the God is clearing a path. I'll be honest, I'm not a big fan of Mark's version of the resurrection story because this is the only story where the women don't tell the disciples about what's happening. They leave the tomb scared. They ran from the tomb and didn't tell anyone. That is what Mark tells us. Now we know from the other three gospels that's not true. They do tell the disciples. But why put that in? The only thing that I could figure that I could come up with is that even with trust, sometimes we fall. I think our lives are filled with a multitude of paths, multitude of directions, and we always try and take the best, best path we can. However, sometimes, whether we like it or not, despite our best intentions, the path in which we go down is filled with stones and filled with potholes. Mark says the ladies were scared. Why would they be scared? Well, got to remember, a woman's thoughts and opinions in Jesus' time were not considered that important. So maybe they thought the men would think they were a little crazy or that they were imagining things. I think that God needed to work through the women a little bit more. We remove a few more stones within them, get over the hindrances, the fears that they might have, and give them the strength so that they could go and tell the men, which we know they did. So what changed for everyone on this glorious Sunday morning? God removed the stone. And by doing that, removed all the hindrances and obstacles so that the disciples of Jesus, men and women, could have the strength to carry on. Jesus came and continued to remove all the extra hindrances and obstacles that were stopping his disciples from proclaiming the truth. The Easter miracle 
of course, is the resurrection. But it's also us truly understanding and trusting and believing in God, believing in the risen Lord, believing that having them, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit in our lives, all our hindrances, all our obstacles can be rolled away. So on this glorious Easter Sunday, I leave you with this. Trust in the Lord. I repeat the words that were said so many times. Do not be afraid. Relish and delight in God's love for you and know that you are loved. Accept the truth of the resurrection. And lastly, I encourage you to model yourself after the women in our story today. Be courageous. Do what needs to be done and not worry. Know that God is with you, that all hindrances will be removed, and that because of the risen Christ, nothing is impossible. Amen. Please stand as you are able. Let us, get, let us give thanks to the Lord our God. He's right, right to give, give our thanks, thanks and praise. praise. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water. Over water, the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation. Through water, you led the children of Israel out of their bondage in Egypt into the land of promise. In water, your son received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah and the Christ to lead us through his death and resurrection from bondage of sin into everlasting life. We thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it, we are buried with Christ in his death and by it, we share in his resurrection. Through it, we are reborn by the Holy Spirit Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we celebrate our fellowship with him in faith. And we pray that all who pass through the water of baptism may continue forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ, our Savior, to whom, to him, to you, and to the Holy Spirit be all honor and glory, now and forever. Amen. Dear friends, through the Paschal Mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism so that we may rise with him in new life. Now that our Lenten observation is ended, let us renew the promises we made in baptism when we rejected Satan and all his works and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ do you believe in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe in Jesus Christ, the Son of God? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate and was satisfied and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. Father, he will come again to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe in God, the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Will you continue in the apostles' teaching and fellowship and the breaking of bread and in the prayers? Will you persevere in resisting evil, and whenever you fall into sin, repent and return to the Lord? I will, with God's help. Will you proclaim by word and example the good news of God in Christ? I will, with God's help. 
Will you seek and serve Christ in all persons, loving your neighbor as yourself? I will, with God's help. Will you strive for justice and peace among all, among all people and respect the dignity of every human being? I will, with God's help. Will you strive to safeguard the integrity of God's creation, respect and sustain and renew the life of the earth? I will, with God's help. God, the creator and the rock of our salvation, has given us new birth by water and the Holy Spirit, and has bestowed on us the forgiveness of sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. May, we keep our, may he keep us faithful to our calling now and forever. Please be seated or kneel for the prayers of the people. <clears throat> Christ is risen, and the power of his resurrection fills the world today with new life, hope, and expectation. And so we bring him all our needs, saying, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Faithful God, we think of your church today celebrating the resurrection all over the world. We pray for our primate Linda, our Metropolitan Anne, our Bishop Susan, our priest Jody, and clergy and church leaders everywhere, that they may be faithful to their calling and true to the word of God. Language, race, race and nationalities may be different, but our worship and our joy on the day of resurrection make us one in the gospel. We pray that the Holy Spirit may guide and strengthen us in mission and service, praying that day by day we may grow in love for you and for our brothers and sisters in Christ. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Creator God, we pray for the leaders of the nations of the world that they may give priority to those with greatest need in the distribution of the world's basic resources. We especially pray on this special day for peace in the world and for countries where there is war and conflict and the people who suffer there. We remember all those involved in the fight against terrorism around the world and for all service personnel in active duty around the world. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Father God, at this joyous Easter tide, we pray for our families and friends, especially for those who are joining us here today. We are thankful for those in this parish of St. James and St. Brendan, remembering Robin Horton, Gary and Pat Hoyle, Beth Jeffrey, Pamela Johnson, Edward Kalelioff, Kathy Carries, Margaret Keegan, Jan Kelba, Norman Kelly, their families and loved ones. We thank you, too, for providing us with those people who honed their skills and have made it possible for so many technological advances that permit our loved ones who live so far away into our homes to celebrate with us with just a few clicks of the computer or cell phone keys. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Creator God, we pray for those who are in need and ask you to look with pity on those who suffer. We pray for the brokenhearted, for the sick, for the lonely, and all other adversities, that your very presence would comfort them in their time of need. We especially pray for all those on our healing prayer list who have asked for our prayers. Kelly Bennett, Mary Cullen, 
Elizabeth Ebert, Huynh Evans, Eleanor Kendall, Angela Milne, Betsy Perez, Eleanor Payton, Jackie Roy, Lindsay Shura, Doug Stewart, Pam Simons, Cheryl Wakefield, Stuart White, Emily, Glenn, Maria, Stephen, John, and Margaret T. We offer our supportive prayers for Kristen and Mikhail Roy as they travel on their life journey. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Merciful God, we pray that those who have died may share in the promise of new life won for us all by the resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ, and his triumph over death and the grave. Today, we remember Simon Belanger, in whose memory the altar flowers have been given, and Ryan Martinson, and the Rivers and Dorn families, in whose memory the porch pots have been given. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Faithful God, as we go out into the world, we pray that we may reflect your love in our families, our church, and our community, so that the world can witness that we are followers of Christ and draw others into his loving care. Accept these, our prayers, for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Savior Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that labor and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all believe in him should not perish but have eternal life. Hear also what St. Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St. John saith. If anyone sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Let us humbly confess our sins to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things and judge of all people, we acknowledge and confess our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word, and deed against thy divine majesty. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may hereafter after serve and please thee in the newness of life, to the honor and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy has promised forgiveness of sins to all of them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you.
God for us, the people of God. Thanks be to God.
A um, couple of announcements. First of all, if you're somebody who delivers the beacon, there's a few there that still need to be picked up and um, delivered. I would greatly appreciate it, please and thank you. Um, I am officially on vacation as of tomorrow, so for the next two Sundays, you will be having morning prayer. Um, at the back of the church, uh, there's a sign-up sheet um, for our Mother's Day high tea. We're asking for a bit of a help. There's a couple columns. One is about food, so if you want to sign up to um, make some food for us, we would greatly appreciate it. The second one is about teapots. We need some extra teapots, so if you're willing to donate a teapot for the day, we would greatly appreciate it. And the third one is um, we need the three-tiered serving trays. Um, we thought we had tons. We don't. We have a lot of two-tiered. But if you're doing a proper high tea, which is what we want to do, you need three tiers. So if you have a three-tiered serving tray, um, we would love to borrow it for their... May 11th is our Mother's Day high tea. Um, parish council minutes are also at the back. And so with you guys getting the parish council minutes, I need to share something with you. Um, at Vestry, um, it looked like we had a $70,000 plus. Um, now, Leslie did let you know that that money was already spoken for. Um, what we realized was that the generous donation that was given to us to pay off our mortgage was entered into the books twice. So we weren't really in the black, we were in the red. Um, and the reason why I'm telling you this is because I am now about to ask for money. Um, Corporation and Parish Council, we uh, made the decision uh, last uh, fall to finally start trying to fix some of the things in the church that needs to be fixed. Um, you know, we fixed the plumbing in the church. Um, we've got the roof fixed. In the spring, we're going to be getting the windows fixed. Um, as many of you know, the sinks in the Guild Hall are a mess. And so we need to get those fixed. Um, and there's two, um, the grand total is $3,450. Um, $2,200 for just the kitchen, another $1,250 um, to actually get hot water running into the bathroom on the stage. Um, we don't have the money right now, so I am asking because we are trying to get everything up to snuff. Um, and so if anybody would like to make a special donation and say this is just for the plumbing in the Guild Hall, I would uh, greatly appreciate it and so would Corporation and Parish Council. I hate talking about money, just so you know. Our service is ended. Go in, pe go in the peace of Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.